to learn to live the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. It's all free. So yesterday, which is several days for you, because I have a few videos in queue, I made a video where I said, I lied, and here's my public apology, and I was, I was being sarcastic about making coffee because I'm not allowed to make coffee because I don't have enough power to make coffee whatever I mean the trolls just attacked on that one I kind of expected it but a lot of you love that video it's one of my best videos I've done in a long time it really did well had really good watch time people really love the sarcasm so I'm trying to figure out how I can repeat that video it's gonna take some thought but of course when the the trolls attack I don't know if they're trolls or, or what it is I mean I guess they are they don't even watch the video they already have an opinion of you and they already know what what your video is about obviously they said well we knew you were lying you and your viewers are uh, you know they called us unintelligent and everything because obviously you're not off grid you have a power line running through your property if they would watch the video it clearly explained why there's a power line in the middle of the property because i talked about it for three minutes of that video but they don't watch they just want to call you stupid and what i find so stupid is is they're stupid for not watching so they can get educated. Caroline even said that today. You can't educate these people. If they're not going to watch, they don't want to learn. But they will be the first ones when I make a poll that will say, well, I don't know what you're worried about. Nothing's going to happen. Everything's fine. And then when something does happen, they're the first ones that, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? I've been sitting in my mom's basement all these years. And, and the thing is, is a lot of viewers believe these folks are our younger generation that might be true but the majority of my viewers i have a little chart they give me are 40 and over uh these trolls i mean i've seen the troll videos they're old men they just love to troll and there's not just one or two i mean there's tons of these angry men who just can't see well i guess there's angry females too i've had some females make videos about me as well. The thing is, is they're never accurate. You go read the comment sections and they misinterpret or just completely turn around everything I've said. And I don't know what makes them feel good about this. I know there's a troll out there and he's terrible, just terrible. And some of my viewers actually watch this troll and they, they go over there and they bash people. I mean, just go over there and bash people. And then they come over to my channel and say, God is watching out for you. I, it just kind of weirds me out that we're going to talk about God. People are going to go over there and be evil to another person and then come over here and talk about God. It's, I mean, I'm not supposed to judge, but it's just like, man, that's just, why would you bring God in the conversation? It's sad that we live in a world where we can just be as mean as we want to be and then be able to say, well, God said I could do it. I don't remember ever learning that in Bible school. These trolls are telling me how stupid I am, and I'm, I'm glad to be this stupid. I really am, and I'm glad that my viewers are as stupid as I am, because in my mind, that makes us smart. We want to live a dream, we want to be happy and free, and we want to accomplish something that's, that makes us feel good. There's this saying, there's this quote, and I know I'm not going to get it right. Dumb people talk about people. Average people talk about events. Smart people talk about ideas and I, I've lived by that I try not to talk bad about people I mean I talk about the trolls but only because I feel like I have a right to defend myself people who want to talk about ideas that's who I want to get a hold of when we hear about an event I try to turn that into an idea and I try to encourage folks to to learn and and come up with their own ideas and how they can improve their situation, how they can improve their lives and be happy and free. But we get brought down by people who ju just don't understand what it is we're trying to do. And so the only thing they can do is criticize. And jealousy, I think a big part of it is jealousy. One of the things that I'm criticized a lot about is the firewood, and, and you know this, I've talked about it a lot. And to come in and say, I don't understand why you're working so hard having firewood well hopefully eventually I won't have to work hard at it once I have my 15 cords my retirement plan I should only have to replace a cord a year and a cord of firewood that's three truckloads that doesn't take any time at all to process get split up and drying so hopefully in the next few years I won't have to work this hard at it I only got what 
three more cords and then I'll have my 15 cords and then just replace what I use each year. But why do I work so hard at firewood? Well, this is where people who talk about people seem to fall down. The value, there is value in this firewood. And if we break down the value, the firewood isn't the value. It's the time I put into it. So folks who go to work every day put in time and get paid a paycheck and then they pay for, for their heat. Well, here's the thing is you don't get paid any more than what you did yesterday, but heating costs keep going up. So your time is now less valuable than it was yesterday. They're, they literally have taxed you. They've taxed you by inflation. So you're making less money for the same amount of time. Me, on the other hand, my value never changes. My time, the value of my time never changes. This one piece of wood right here will burn the same amount of time and, and produce the same amount of heat today, tomorrow, the next day, 10 years from now. So the time it took me to actually process that piece of wood never changes. So when we talk about smart, my value never changes. I know how much wood it's gonna take me to heat the house every year, and that's what I gotta produce. So my time doesn't change. Let's say it takes a week to process that much wood. So once a year, I have to spend one week processing that much wood. However, if you go to work and you spend a week to have enough money to pay for your heat all year, to next week, you're t you will have to put in overtime, for example, to be able to pay for heat for this winter. So it always changes. You're not getting pay raises or keeping up with inflation. So who's stupid? Me or the guy who goes to work? And the reason I bring this up is I just learned today from actually a, a fairly reputable newspaper, if you want to call any of them reputable. But in Bloomberg News, if you want to go look it up, several electric companies, power companies, utility companies, that's probably the best words to use, have come out and said that there are going to be power outages this winter, especially if it's a prolonged uh, event like last year. Well, okay, let me think about last year. Last year, I remember, was moderately warm all winter. From like October to January, I was up here building a tiny house and temperatures rarely got below 25 degrees. So it wasn't even that cold. But then in February, we had a two week spell of cold weather. I don't call that prolonged. I call that normal February weather. So they're saying if we have temperatures that are prolonged, cold temperatures that are prolonged, they're gonna have to start doing power outages like they did last year in Texas. Well, if I recall, Texas was out of power for several days and a lot of people perished from it. So now we're talking about worldwide. So I don't follow the news very closely over in Europe, but apparently in Europe, they're, they're running out of natural resources for electricity and natural gas and all that. So they're already experiencing power outages and having to increase prices. Again, don't follow it very closely. But what I did follow is Bloomberg and several other no-name newspapers said that since the world is short in resources, like fuel and coal, that they're gonna to have to have these power outages. Now, they also said that they are going to be forced to raise prices of natural resources, utilities. Now, some of the prices didn't make sense. It ranged anywhere from like 11 bucks to 50 bucks a month extra. So I guess it depends on the location and where you're at and what they're using. As the world starts trying to reduce the amount of coal that it's using, they're trying to go over to other sources of energy, renewable energy. Now, I'm not criticizing renewable energy, obviously, because I use it. But if you're gonna use renewable energy, you actually have to reduce the amount of electricity that you use. We only have a refrigerator, a tablet, and three phones that we power. That's it, that's all we use electric for. Now, we might run a fan sometimes and just, you know, little odds and ends. I can run the well pump, on sunny days like this, I'll be able to run the well pump and get water out of it. Not a lot of electricity. But as temperatures drop and we increase the amount of power we have to use for areas that are using that renewable energy, 
these won't keep up. To make the, a real easy example, when I was talking about that liar video, I said that there's not enough power to run a coffee pot. And somebody says, oh, that's bull. I got 250 watts of solar panels and I can run a coffee pot and air conditioner. So I Googled coffee pot wattage, 750 watts per hour. So if you turn on your coffee pot and you let it run for an hour, that's 750 watts. But his panels are only making 250 watts. The math just doesn't add up. The air conditioner, 5,000 watt BTU air conditioner, which is exactly what we ran off 1,000 watts here. This is what we had last year. And I could only run it two hours a day. And then I didn't have enough electricity. It just wouldn't keep up. So I always ran it during the hottest part of the day from like two to four. Propane cost fluctuates so much. So if you get propane in the summer, I could never get propane to last the entire winter. And I lived in a very small house, very small house. I wouldn't even, I think maybe 400 square feet. So probably double the size what I live in now. And I had to fill it twice. Of course, it wasn't insulated very well. This was a rental house. So if you had to fill it twice, remember that second filling is going to be very expensive. And you better start filling it now if it's not already full. Best time to fill your propane is in the summertime. I just did an exchange on propane tank for my cooking stove. It went up five bucks. Price is already going up on propane. So I hope I can inspire you to live free so you can be happy and smart. Thanks for watching.